But yeah, as I said, move around, do whatever you like. That's the benefit of having the handhold. Dancing. You can do some dancing. You can show off your Brazilian dancing. <laughs> I mean, that's what all Brazilians are meant to be able to do. Dance. Absolutely. Yeah, dance. Party. Well, I mean, dan- I mean, same sort of thing. But that actually would probably be the most quintessential Brazilian feature, the ability is, to dance. Yeah. Yeah, and, and look pretty. Have you... Oh, and look pretty as well. Brazilians, pretty looking, great dancers. Have you ever met a Brazilian that is a shit dancer? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, wow, that's a really failing that stereotype. Is that like... Are they disappointed? Is everyone disappointed in them? They're like, oh, really letting us down. No, actually not. <laughs> well, I don't know. It comes naturally to me. But I've always danced with like family stuff um, at school, or is that because you've just got rhythm? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, being a Brazilian, like I would hope that you've got <laughs> some serious rhythm. But then, yeah, is that you? No, that's me. Okay, just checking the levels out. But then, some people just don't get it. Most of my friends don't get it. But we're all just like white dudes who just yeah. like rhythm. What's that? Uh. There's <laughs> well, a beat it's here. Funny. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> I'm actually. I consider myself a good dancer within the group, though. Yeah, you do. You do dance pretty. Oh. Yeah, you got some moves. I got some moves. Yeah, you got some moves. Because all I did as a kid, well, not all I did, but one of the things I did do as a kid was YouTube videos of people dancing, yeah. and then I'd replicate it. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out because, you know, you'd see someone do uh, like, I don't know, like the classic is like the moonwalk. It's like, oh, how do I, how do I do that? Mm-hmm. Uh, so like we'd learn little bits and pieces like that yep. and try and copy someone doing like partly robot popping locking. Like I yes. really loved the popping locking. I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. And I want to be cool. So and I'm going to look. <laughs> obviously want to be cool. I want the girls to like me on the dance floor. This is, this is what I'm going to need to learn, of course. And now like... You know, I don't. I'm not the the best dancer by any means, but at least I'm typically better than just my other friends. So mm. really, that's the goal of any yeah. situation. Yeah, better than your friends. <laughs> 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 Would you? Are you like topping out on the dancing ability within amongst your friend cohort, or are you like now nah, the friends are you know really good? How humble are you? <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm usually humble, but I know, like, it's it's very easy. It comes naturally for me, and um, especially if like couple, um, couple, uh, couple ballroom, dancing. Yeah, ballroom dancing. Ballroom. Uh, yeah, ballroom. Oh, ballroom. ballroom! Right, right, right. Yeah. Gotcha. So. So that's what you f- you find ballroom like. You're naturally good at ballroom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, when I think Brazilian dancing, I think like dancing in the street, shaking your booty, like... Which, yeah, which is uh, easier, I kind reckon, because you, you, like, you don't get to get used with someone else's rhythm. It's just yours, right? So I think it's easier. Yeah, sure. Yep. Um, so, wait. But yeah, for me, it's easy, both types of dancing. You can just pick it up. Yeah. So you, are you, uh, so you can just follow into someone else's rhythm if you need to. Yeah. Your body just kind of like figures it out. It's like, there's a beat. We'll work with that. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But, you know, like TikTok's choreographies. Yeah. I oh. suck at that. How often have you tried <laughs> to do a TikTok <laughs> choreography? Well, I do have friends. They love it. And um, when I was in Brazil um, the last time, they were like, oh, let's make some videos. I was like, yeah, why not? Nah. I'm terrible. Is that because there's just a camera in front of you? Like if you took away the camera aspect and they were just trying to do the choreography component, would you be like, do you think you'd pick it up and it's more the phone you're like, yeah. No, it's just like, it's not your intuition um, in the dance. It's just like you have to do the moves. Right. Yeah, just like, like you just copy someone else. Sure, and, um, and your your body's trying to fit into someone else's mold. Yeah, yeah. like that's mm, not how that I would do it. Yeah. I would do it so much better than this. <laughs> yeah, God, these guys suck. <laughs> 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 I 
Well, that's how, I mean, TikTok was originally purely for dance, uh, like recreation and, and choreography and kids mim- miming to songs, I guess, and making little dance routines. Like that was the whole, because TikTok was originally called Musical.ly back in its like early inception. Early, yeah. And it was just all about people doing those little yes, was, yeah. dance, little sessions. And now, I mean, I'm on TikTok occasionally and I rarely see, I don't know if that's maybe, maybe it's just like in the algorithm for me. It was a trend me. and then now it's, it's not a thing anymore. It just seems like it's evolved past that was like the original. It's kind of like Instagram used to be just about posting photos of yourself. Yeah. And then it's now it's got like stories and it's got reels and people, at least certainly my age, rarely post about themselves and it's more about like the things that they're doing in everyday life yeah. to make it look like they're a more rounded, interesting person. But of course, like, you know, we're just all... We're just faking. We're all just marketing ourselves. Yeah. You know, which is most... Social media is largely for single people, in my opinion. Or someone that has a purpose as well, like sharing that purpose... Yeah, true. Like for businesses, it's also yeah very good. For everyone else, like for everyone my age on Instagram, you're rarely active, if ever, if you're in a relationship. If you're single, you're rarely interacting with like posts or anything. You're mostly doing stories and messages. Cause so you're just trying to get like a reason to reach out to someone or even if it's just a friend, like it's kind of useful – where you haven't talked to your mate for a little while or something and then they post and you get to be like, hey, dude, like, girls, yeah. like, besides from that, it's, do you doom scroll or are you pretty good again? Are you pretty good at avoiding, you know, doom scrolling where you basically get on your phone and then all of a sudden 30 minutes have gone by and you're like, oh, Jesus. No. No, don't do it? No. Hey, good. <laughs> good. I get tired pretty quick. So, especially because they're all showing the same things. Yeah. And the repetition for me is just like, oh, tired of this like me read a book group do something else so the only thing i would have thought it, what if you just had neuroscience non-stop oh, yeah. just like filtering <laughs> through to you even though even that yeah even though because i do okay you have a lot yes, of that i do have a lot of that um i follow um people that studying neuroscience or people are like teachers like professors but even though to so, like, I would rather just read their book or, like, watch a good video on YouTube, like, like two hours long, than doing the Instagram short reels. Yeah, rather than just getting those little snippets of, yeah, little, I don't know, clickbaity, quick dopamine hitty sort of things. Yeah. I've gotten bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten real bad. I went from completely avoiding all of it to slowly getting sucked into reels, particularly like chess, UFC. Like those will start to pull me in. I get the occasional just, I don't know. It's like the Jordan Peterson, Andrew Tate sort of nonsense as well yeah. that comes through. There's like a lot of shit that just pops up. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but it does draw me in a little bit. So I've I've got to I've got to get a grip on this because I'm definitely finding myself like twenty minutes is gone. It's like fuck, god damn it, that was a waste of time. But that's all right, you know I'm not the yeah. only one dealing with this issue at the moment. Yeah, um, I would say some of your time you could still like waste on it. It's not a problem because then like you just fall into the talking that. Or you can do things that are not building your character or not. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, a bit of junk is all right. Uh, Like, I would agree with you, except for the fact that I rarely see moderation being a true (laughs) way to live life. Yeah. I don't think moderation really works. True. So, certainly not between the ages of 20 and 40 and maybe I'll explain why that would be the case but like at our age right now if you're going to give yourself the excuse to not exercise for a day or to eat something bad for a day or to have a drink or to have a dart or something like anything that you think is a vice that you allow yourself to indulge in uh, it becomes so much easier to then allow yourself to do that again Again, and again. again yeah and like it's very difficult that if you break 
your virtuous cycle to not sort of rationalize well i've already broken this or i've already done that what's the harm in yeah, another um, yeah that's true uh so i find yeah like usually hard and fast rules are important like i will not eat chocolate chip cookies yeah if i don't have them in the apartment but if i do it will be very unlikely of me to stop eating them until they're gone in one setting yeah i get that okay so like <laughs> i know that's how i work maybe that's not everyone but at oh, least yeah. you I just have to know yourself right yeah i guess so. i guess some people can can uh, can manage moderation but i think you're just creating an environment which makes it a lot more difficult like if they had the ability for me to uh what would you say, like block mm. or restrict reels completely as a function, yeah. that would be awesome. Because then I would really just be using it for a quick, see if there's anyone around me, any of my mates that are doing something worthwhile reaching out for. And then you can be done with that within five minutes, like max. And then you're not getting caught into some mm. weird cycle of watching short videos for no reason. It's a lot of your family, so like, you know, you come from Brazil, Kathleen, yeah. and is that how you stay in touch with a lot of like friends and family over there? Is that largely, is it, would it be Instagram or Facebook or yeah. I guess how do you stay um, in touch with everyone? WhatsApp video calls with parents and um, my closest family and um, for friends, yes, Instagram, just um, seeing the stories and yeah. How often do you reach out to be like, hey, what's going on? Not too often at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sort of goes that way. Eventually, just when you've got enough separation for long enough, like I've got one of my best friends over in the UK and we've probably reached out like once every six months or yeah, something. Yeah. You know, it just sort Something of like, like that. slows down. I think for me, it's just the thought that every time I, I reach out to them, it just comes to my mind, oh, I miss that person. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that's... <laughs> that's too sad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's so like you're not reaching out because of like the emotional trauma it causes partly. Well, no, I don't like... I don't think of doing it. Sure. Like it's not on purpose. Yeah. But I think that is why. That's like what's behind the scenes that why I don't, I don't just message them more. Mm. Well, now that you've just uh, off pod... You did mention that you're, and we'll get to why you're in Oz and all that sort of stuff, but uh, you did mention that you're into your neuroscience, very keen to begin a course in there as well, largely because you're very interested in behaviour, as you're now describing to me, like, what would be the, beha- what's the reason behind why I act out this certain behaviour? Yeah. Do you find yourself thinking about that a lot now? Yeah. Like, as things happen, yeah. you're like, what is the reason yes, for this yes. behaviour? <laughs> all the time. <laughs> All the time, not to myself. Not, not to just yourself. to myself. Sure. Um, to other people as well, like the closest people, people to me. Do and you uh, voice it to them or is this more of an internal No, monologue? it's internal. Because okay. I'm living in my own world most of the time. Okay. Because I feel like it would be, I don't know if it would be an uncomfortable thing to do, but it would be good to be able to check your intuition about what is causing the behaviour basing it in like re- like real life feedback yeah and so they're like that is why i'm holy shit you know <laughs> or they're like nah you're well off that's got nothing to yeah, do with it yeah it'd be interesting to see how accurate you were with your yeah interpretation well, i do have friends that i have the freedom to do that sure okay so yes yeah not yeah, everyone wants to not be everyone no yeah try to figure it out i yeah. guess as to why they do certain things it is funny that yeah you, there are some friends that you can we almost instinctively do that back and forth with. You're telling a story and they're like, nah, I know why you did that. Yeah. Or, you know, some people are just a little bit more cluey with that stuff. Um, but I guess uh, as a poor segue back, so Kath, <laughs> we met when uh, we were working at an aged care facility. Yeah. And it was great times, particularly during COVID. Oh. What a fun time Miss that was. Miss it so much. <laughs> <laughs> fond memories. Very fond memories. But um, you've had one of the more interesting journeys, I guess, and pathways through into Australia from Brazil. So I think uh, one of the things that I find not only interesting to me, but I guess maybe helpful to someone else that is looking to come over 
to to Australia, whether it be on a skill visa or working holiday or for a tourist, you know, time, whatever it may be. I guess like what your journey was to get here, um, and then perhaps uh, given that your your neuro background, maybe I'll I'll try and even guess the reasons why. No, nah, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, what was your sort of journey to to coming into Oz? So it started probably 2018. Okay. Yeah. When when the world was simpler. <laughs> <laughs> I was at uni <laughs> and uh yeah, no. I was dating this guy and um at the time I was studying biology and I've always wanted to study science like my whole life. Um and Love I knew I love it, sorry, yeah, continue. <laughs> and um, I knew that to do that in Brazil would be pretty hard um, to follow the academic pathway. Because um, it's not yeah. rewarding. It's not rewarding financially. Right. Or it's also like difficult to be able to do the research as well. Like you don't have the material sometimes and... Um, Lack of resources and things, yeah. right? Um, so, when we started dating, I knew he was gonna come to Australia soon, and I was okay with that. We were just gonna break up when it was time for him to come. But um, he asked me if I wanted to come with him. I was like, mm, "Yeah, all right, let's do that. Maybe I could study in Australia and then do that." That I would really love to do with my life there because I don't think here in Brazil it's going to be possible to do it. Okay. Did you do much research about how you might do it in Australia or like were you sort of, all right, he's going, he's invited me, all right? I did some. I didn't get much into it, but um, at least the first stages of it, like studying English and then... um, getting to uni i did um gather some some info about that okay and so prior so you were at uni back home originally yes doing what at the time biology biology so then you finished that no No. um i was two years into that okay and you're like all right pull the pin yeah is that is do you guys get free university over there is it paid or we get free uni it's pretty hard to get in um, You're smart, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I did got into. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, but I decided not to um, continue that. Like I decided not to get into a free um, studies one, like a free. Sure. Like a. Um, you went for a private. Yeah, I yeah. went to the private one because it was. Um, so. I got into the course that I wanted, but it was at nine time. A nine time course? Yes. Okay. How so old were you at the time during this? 17, 16, 17, 17. Is that young for someone in uni as well? No, it's the... That's the normal the, one? Yeah, that's okay. the normal, yeah. Um, 17 to 18. Okay, yep. To, yeah. So... I didn't do. I didn't want to, and it was like, it wasn't close to where I used to live. It was about an hour. Bus drive. Drive. An hour drive. Um, and the the uni I got in, it was like just seven minutes to my place, and I got a scholarship of um seventy percent. Gangster. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> And, um, yeah. Okay. So what, uh, but the original, like, getting into biology and science and all that, like, do you remember how far back you wanted to study science or any of the reasons as to why you sort of fell in love with that side of things? I was about eight years old when I started watching documentaries. So. And you just remember thinking... This is yeah, cool. This is, yeah, this is cool. Shit. I want to do that. This is it. This is the <laughs> one. Do you remember like a particular documentary? It or? was um, Shark Brains documentary. Shark Brains. Yeah. 
the literal, I'm guessing, dissection of a, su- a shark, removal of the brain, like looking like, oh, this is this is what the shark brain is. And yeah, how that's works. how they behave, and um, yeah, cool. That's why they do this and that. Did they do a great white? Like, do you remember the kind of sharks? I've never he seen. It was it was the whale shark? The whale shark. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah, so cute. They are amazing. Do they? I feel like they've got a small brain. Is it a small brain? Um, they seem like they yeah, were big fish, like they'd yes, have a kind of a small little. But they are pretty. Um, they think pretty fast. Okay. Yeah. So the speed of the synapses or yeah. whatever is pretty what faster than humans? No. Okay. No, but yeah, to fish. From your understanding, uh, what like does intelligence have a relationship? With speed of transmission of signal, like, do you have a an understanding or appreciation for what constitutes a smarter brain more than one more than the other or anything? Don't really. Don't know. Like, yeah. So. I thought way. I thought it had something to do with the contours, something to do with like. Because you know the joke of uh, you're a smooth-brained person? No. So, like, there is a, there's a condition where uh, if you're born with... Some people can be born with a smooth brain. Yeah. And it debilitates you. You're not really actually able to yeah, function yeah. as a, uh, a normal human being and you're significantly disabled, if at all able to continue on in life. Uh, and so there is some level of, like, the contouring that goes through which increases like surface area and therefore like more neurons are available and more synapses are available between. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, I'm sure there are other animals that have bigger brains with just as much in the way of contours. So I've always been like, oh yeah, what does, besides from us having like a big neocortex compared mm-hmm. to, I guess, a lot of animals, I was yeah. like, is it, if you just had, if we just doubled the amount of neurons available in the brain or something, or just doubled like everything about it in scale by two, does it make it four times more powerful as a like the brain or the computer? You know, that's why I was like, what if what 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 lever do you or what knob do you turn to make us super smart? That but you know. Yeah. We knows? do have about eighty six billion neurons, so that We need more. Yeah. <laughs> do we? <laughs> no, um, yeah. So you saw this shark brain and you saw that they were trying to figure out behaviours while looking directly at the shark brain. And were you like, I want to do that for animals or for humans or for both? Or was it for just... Both. A- uh, at the time, sharks. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> which are the coolest thing ever at yeah. that age. Shark week. <laughs> Come on. But then eventually um, humans as well. and um, And also like... When you start to um, studying evolution, you get it like the first form of brain also becomes like really interesting, mm. and um, so it's just like this big um, I would say that it's just so many things that are interesting. It's a big puzzle, yeah. Yeah. There's, I, I do like, you're right, like the evolutionary component of it yeah. is very cool. It is. Like to see how we still have aspects of like our reptilian brain and the limbic system, which ends up probably being the major cause or like the major area that you would look at when determining why someone did what they did. Because we typically, you know, base a lot of our decisions more of our intuition, how we feel as our why, which is like very limbic system, very yeah, emotional yeah. sort of response. And then the neocortex is there to try and like post hoc yes. rationalize <laughs> decisions and be like, oh, I did that because of, you know, because I was, that's the smartest, most logical move to make. It's like, mm, probably wasn't. You were just pissed off and, you know, yeah, decided it's to. Just the, the information that you have around you that like determined you to do that at that time. It's very cool. Like, it, yeah, there's, so is there a like a part is there a particular question 
that you're searching or like re- like really interested in or it's just again more of the general I don't know how uh, behavior is affected um I'm really curious about the part of like when you get your brain damaged yep how does the brain transfer one ability or one like task to the other part of the brain right yeah how do you sort of how, how does the brain adapt or compensate yeah. for a loss of a certain yeah. area which is what from like strokes and from blunt traumas and yeah things of that nature yeah and how well does it do that because i mean maybe it does it a 30 yeah. percent transfer yeah. or something do you reckon Neither of us are experts, but do you reckon <laughs> we'll get to the point where we can like regenerate the brain or do you have any, do you currently have, and I know we're going, we're not super chatting right now about Australia and your journey and whatever, but this <laughs> is interesting to me, so whatever. But uh, do you reckon at some point we will either be able to yeah, regrow your brain or download consciousness or something to those effects? Like, do you have a sense from the little that you've looked at and your interest as a whole wh- where we might end up there? I think we are, uh, yeah, we we are turning that way. We are going that direction, especially with um, AI and um, mm. yeah, with um, artificial neuro um, designs. Is that sort of like Neuralink, the Elon Musk thing, where they're putting chips? Yeah, Is that what you mean by that, or yeah, and also trying to like they're trying to make a conscious yeah like um <laughs> trying to make like it's not working yeah that's okay <laughs> i mean again you, you are speaking in second language as well so i mean I'm also it's more the lack of sleep Actually, oh, the lack of sleep. Yeah, because I can so think properly in my language too. Oh, uh, okay, and then you just <laughs> retranslate it around. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good question to ask yourself as well as what within the brain will help with the sleep process for the next little bit. You were saying uh, off pod as well that the last like three weeks, or so not the best sleep. It's funny, I've not been having the best sleep as well. And there's about two other people I've spoken with recently that are all. Maybe, I don't know, maybe as my mum would like to say, oh, there's probably a full moon. <laughs> Everything is always related back to the full moon for mum. That's like her go-to. Full moon. Which is very cute, like I must admit. And I every time I'm like, oh, it's the full moon, was it, mum? Is that is that what it was? She's like, yeah, you know, it makes everyone go a bit weird. Yeah, um, people say a lot about like, is it regressive mercury? Was it? That? Oh, in retrograde? Yeah, 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 retrograde. yeah, 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 yeah. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> no idea. Yeah, but uh, But it is funny to say. And look, maybe there is mum's intuition uh, hasn't made sense from like a rational or at least from one point of view from like what was seemingly rational. And yet at the same time, in retrospect or like coming forward in years, some of mum's intuitions have been correct or at least now backed a little bit by, you know, current day thinking. Grounding was one of them, right? Mum's love for you've got to get your bare feet on the grass like predated grounding as this real big phenomenon earthing that's coming through and earthing. Yeah. She was big on that. She was like, no, like, you know, you should get out there. And we're like, mum, what is that? <laughs> like, what is that meant to do? You know, she was spot on. Yeah. Intuition was correct. So I do have to give her some more credit. <laughs> so now when she's like, oh, full moon, I'm like, fuck, maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the full moon's causing some shit. Yeah, the mum's nose. They do. They 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 can um they can cue into something. I was speaking with uh, a friend the other day who actually has a twin. Yeah. Do you have any friends that are twins? Um, my late mother-in-law. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I asked them or asked her, "Do you have any twin powers? Do you know, have <laughs> like, you have you experienced like you know when they're in danger or you've had a sixth sense about something going on that you have to reach out and, you know, whatever, or something weird, you know, basically like, you know, have you had that? She's like, once a month. (laughs) Really? She's like, yeah, it's, we'll, we'll kind of know. It's just this intuition that you get. I have to, 
get in touch with out, this yeah. person. And, you know, 95% of the time we're spot on. I was like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. That's pretty gangster. I like it. Can't explain it. <laughs> but I do like it. It does make us, it does at least lead me to think that there is maybe a little bit more unity uh, within the space around us that we're not completely aware of. Yeah. But, you know, if we're able to tune into, I don't know what you would call it, some other form of energies, you know, we're not seeing radio wave signals bouncing around us. We're not seeing light waves Atoms. bouncing around us. Yeah. Everything that's bouncing around us for the most part, we're ignoring such a huge amount of that when we're ignoring the electromagnetic force. Well, yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. But we're, we're, we're ignoring so many forces and we just get this seemingly clear, very uneventful picture around us. But there's so much shit interacting with us nonstop. So, yeah, maybe there's a chance that we're just not – like right now, Yeah. like maybe I could sense if you really sent out a signal, like what you're thinking. Yeah. Maybe I could. Maybe it's like a little radio wave, maybe a thought process. Like, like I can, I'm getting that. I'm getting that. Oh, uh, it's in Brazilian. <laughs> I can't understand it. Port- Say Brazilian. Oh, is it Brazilian? Portuguese? <laughs> Spanish? Portu- it is Portuguese. It is Portuguese. Yeah. But I think there was a talk that people were tari- uh, trying to get it separate, like just Brazilian and as like not to be Portuguese because um, what was the... Just let it out. But Can't the, remember yeah. now. <laughs> but the country as a whole was like, we should differentiate ourselves from Portuguese because we don't live in Portugal. We don't. We're also. We. It's basically Spanish as well. But we don't live in Spain. Let's just say that we've got enough of an accent now within the Portuguese language that we call it Brazilian. Is that sort of the? There was a community meeting. I <laughs> think it was something else, but I'll oh, actually okay. because I like just now I have no idea. I started to think <laughs> about sort of it. I was like, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that lack of sleep kicking in. So to get back to it, uh, you know, your boyfriend's decided, or boyfriend at the time's decided, going to Oz and then he's invited you and you're like, you know what, I've got this scholarship here and that's well and good, but I don't really see pathway future, forward yeah. for it. So... Let's do that. And was the hope to get straight into study here or was it like, you know, did you have a, what was your guess, your plan or what what sort of happened next? I knew it would still take some time, but it it would be worth it because um, even though it would take some time, like, oh, I'll I'll do that when I'm 23 or 24, um, it's still better to, like, have something that you think is going to go forward than doing something that you just think you're wasting your time. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a. It's good that you avoided the sunk cost fallacy, which is where um, you know, the idea of losing something makes you believe that you've thrown away what you've done for it. So, like, you, know, you throwing away two years of study sounds like a waste of time but it's not actually true because you're saving your future by not spending another year or two years or whatever it was just to complete it for the sake of completing it so the sunk cost fallacy makes you think that you should complete something but ultimately if that's not what you're after in this case it's like no you're actually much better off to dump what you've just done even though it seems like you're going backwards yeah Mm. okay so you did that I did that. And then how quickly from when you were asked to go? So this is again, you're 18 still? 18-ish? Yes, I was eight, I was 18 at the time. And so... And then how soon after? I got, mm. um, I got a job because I, I was thinking, oh, I need money for the visa... Um, the ticket, the flight tickets, the study. So I got a job. Um, I had 70% scholarship, but at the time, I also did something that is like intro to research in the uni that also grant me like what was left of my studies, like well for what, um, what I was going to pay. So I wasn't paying anything anymore. Okay, cool. It was all free. Um, Damn. Yeah. So, yeah, I was studying 
um, working. And then when I was, I was like 19, was it? Yeah, it took me about a year to get the money and for us to come. So how much in that year time did you save up-ish, like roughly? I think it was about 20 to 30 grand. Nice. Yeah. Doing what? What was the job at the time? Oh, it was just a um, food kiosk, like a, a small, yeah. Were you So you were still studying during that time or not? You gave yeah. up the studies basically? No, okay. I was still studying until I came here. So I was studying. I was doing the intro to research. They got me another um, scholarship, like a fund, uh, oh that yeah. paid for the studies. So I wasn't paying anything for that. I was living with my mom. Um, and yeah, so I didn't have another cost, like transport or, or anything else. It was just like saving the money to come here. Yeah, that was the full goal, not going out, buying fancy things and whatever, just just squirreling away everything that you could. Yeah. And then had you already had a, like, was there a date already set for, all right, in a year's time, we're going? Was that yeah. sort of the yeah. plan from yeah, the get-go? Yeah, that was go? the plan, yeah. yeah. So then you, you arrive here, so now you're 19-ish, 20, 19, yeah. 20, whatever. Yeah, I was, yeah, 19 and a half, yeah. Yep. And what happened next? Where did you fly into? What so was sort of the, the I journey? I went to Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, four seasons. <laughs> yep. So I went to Melbourne at, um, uh, it was 2000. It was 2019. Went to Melbourne. Then we thought we were going to rent a place for ourselves. When we got there, it was just too expensive for that. So we were sharing a place um, with a family. It's like, it was it four people, four other people. So we were six in a house. And um, I got there in March and uh, started studying in April. What were you studying over there? English, general English. Okay, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like three months of, was it three months? Yeah, three months and then two other, um, so three months studying English and then we just got three, two other months to travel. Um, that we just work to save for the other visa. So you came over on a particular, yeah, what were the visas? How did you navigate that? Yeah, It was the student visa. Student visa to come over? Yeah. Yes. It was, was it five months? Whatever. Five five or six months visa. Yeah, to study English. And then we both studied. And after that, we... (laughs) Yeah, we applied... (laughs) Then you moved into, you got the relationship visa or something like that. Yeah, no, not yet. Okay. I'm just, I don't know if like we should be talking about that because... We can edit it. Yeah, if you don't want to, we don't have to. No, let me just think what I'm... Yeah, just think what I can say. I think what we'll do is we'll pretty much just cut out. I won't, basically I won't go into specific visa details. I'll just say we split up. It's Okay. All right. But I, no, no, I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say, like, I got a visa for myself to study. And sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, after uh, general English visa, uh, we both apply as partners for me to study. So that was two years study. And I was going to study IT. Is that just because it was a big need in the market? Or was it sort yes. of just from a. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. And we'll get like, because the plan was applying for PR because he's an engineer, so we're going to apply through him. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. And that would get points because IT get you points for the skewed visa because it's on the list as well. Is there 
it, it, so is that one of like the top rank? Like you get more points for moving yeah, into something like Yeah, you get like, like ten points if your partner that's doing the the visa application with you is like if the the um, inner skill yeah. that we need as well. Yes. Sure. Okay. Cool. So you kind of like looked at the list. And I was like, all right. Yeah, I could get it. I actually was in like I was interested in IT as well. Okay. So yeah, out of like cooking or any other thing. That was what I liked. Cooking? Oh, like being a chef? That yeah. was like, okay. And <laughs> <I don't> no. <laughs> yeah. Not a vibe. Um, and then I started studying IT. Um, and then COVID hit. Yay. <laughs> so exciting. So you were in Melbourne when it first came in? Yeah. I was actually. So what happened was um, I studied that year. And then I applied for the new visa. And while it was being processed, I went to Brazil. Oh, so you did... On my first year that was here, uh, I just went to Brazil on holidays. During COVID? No, before COVID. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So before COVID, and when I came back a month later... They closed the borders. I was just so lucky. I was going to say, that is close. There was someone who was just like you, but left like a month later. Yeah. And then bang. It's like, ooh. ooh. Yeah. So you got back in when borders were closed. And then how long did you stick around in Melbourne for? Um, two years, two years and a half. Through, through a lot of COVID? Because you were eventually over here in Perth. Oh, no, yeah, true. No, so just one year. Okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, COVID. So I was like, we definitely worked through a bit of COVID, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you were like, it hit hard in Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't working at all because I used to work on a restaurant and they closed all, all restaurants. They were just doing takeaway, but I used to um, do the sandwiches. I was sandwich hand. So, no, no bueno. Yeah. So, what did you do? Like, how did you guys function and survive over that period? If, like, obviously work for yourself, your own job is pretty much just gone, it would be extremely difficult to find work at that point. From my understanding, there wasn't exactly government handouts for anyone that wasn't a citizen um, of the country or maybe permanent residents as well, maybe. I'm not sure. Like, how were you surviving? So, we got, the, the students got a govern pay, at least in Melbourne, we did. Got a govern, government pay um, during that time. It mm-hmm. was about, like, 1500 or so. Uh, a month? No. <laughs> totally. Once or twice. Once or twice, you got. During, like, that a year. That year period? Because Melbourne locked down a lot. Yeah. It was like for eight months straight and then we had a break and then two months and then we had a break and then four months had had a break and then just keep going on like that. So in between those breaks I could work and I went back to work at the restaurant. When I was back in lockdown I could still do some cleaning jobs, just like a few cleaning jobs. Just sanitation um, on supermarkets or... Were you burning through savings or were you kind of managing to keep... Yeah. Level? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So there was the government relief that wasn't much, but it helped. So the schools were very comprehensive at the time as well. So um, they did break the payments as well. What do you mean break the payments, sorry? Um, they did... They like... Pause payments or...? or they would pause or they would like make like half now and then half. Right, okay, yeah. I gotcha. So... How, how would you say that? Um... I mean, 
they basically did partial payments? Yeah, they, they did partial payments. Okay. So during that period, so really that's at least a good solid year of kind of picking up odd jobs here and there. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing sort of partner was doing the same. Did you have a bunch of friends? Like were a lot of people that you knew, uh, like were they all doing similar things? They were doing similar things. My partner did have a con- um, consistent job because he was um, driving um, delivery trucks. Okay. So that was consistent. Um but some of my friends had to go back to Brazil because it was too hard for them, yeah. So when the borders closed, you could still fly out if you had to? Yeah. Okay. And then for, again, sort of like during that period, were you allowed to, like, How? because I'm not even fully aware, having lived in Perth and WA during that whole period, how much were you allowed to go outside during that period? You know, what were you really allowed to do day to day? Five kilometers radius. <laughs> and you're allowed, like, in your household, one person go to the supermarket. And that was pretty much true for every... So during those periods of lockdowns, it was don't leave your five kilometer radius. One person can go to the shops at any one time. But you could, you could go outside just to exercise. Yeah, five kilometer radius. Yeah, within yeah. a five kilometer radius of your home, and you could obviously drive to work. I mean, some yeah, most people just trying to work to from home. and from work. Yeah, fun times. Yeah. Why would you ever leave Melbourne after oh. an experience <laughs> like that? Right. Um, so as soon as we could, we just leave. Like we just left Melbourne. We just look for some other place to live because. They're going back to the lockdowns, like, Very pretty regularly, often. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that and it, it was actually the plan, because we prefer the Perth lifestyle rather than Melbourne. So you were in Melbourne for quite some time. Were you looking around, like, all right, so where would we like to live next? Because, you know, you got Adelaide, Perth, you got Brisbane, you got Sydney, you got Hobart, you got maybe even Darwin, I guess. What sort of... Uh, well, how are you weighing everything up and why did you end up moving to Perth? Did you look at other areas? Like, yeah, get, what was that process like? Yeah, so we look at other areas as well, Adley, as you said. Um, but we, we like, four, like, me and my partner at the time, we loved four-wheel driving. So Perth seems to be paradise for that because yep. of, the, like, the amazing landscape. Um it was also, you get, like, when you're applying for the permanent visa, um, as of, re- like, regional, you get more points studying here. Okay. Yeah. Um, the job offers as well. Um, renting. So, four-wheel driving, uh, more points for permanent residency. Uh, you rent felt prices. Rent prices, so the, the general salaries were better. My living cost was better here. Yeah, okay. So were you talking to people that were sort of currently already living here? Yeah. Yeah. We have... Uh, I, I reckon they have this for every city or town um, here in, in Australia. So we got Brazilians in Melbourne, Brazilians in Adelaide, Brazilians in Perth. We just went to the Facebook page and... Um, we looked what were people saying about Perth. Um, we act, we reached out to friends that moved to here. That's what we did. It's pretty... Like, I think it's true for most countries when you're inside another country, you do have, like, a little network of yeah. your own countrymen and women. Uh, like, you know, like, it's, it's very funny. Like, Australians, if we go to UK or anywhere... You can easily find yeah. an Australian group of Aussies in X, Y, Z, yes. wherever you are. Uh, it's funny how I mean it kind of makes sense, of course. Like you know, they're your own country, yeah. uh, countrymen. You why help wouldn't your you? People, yeah. Yeah, you know, like you know, we've all been there before. We all have the same context, same language, same things. So yeah, it kind of makes sense just, that you like just make it easier for everyone. And yeah, is that how when you first came to Oz again? Did you have a, a crew of people that you knew over here or some friends or anything or was it really starting from scratch just starting from scratch didn't know anyone so how did you go about was it like high on the agenda in order to get i mean you've got a partner at the time as well which is i don't know that's helpful 
Um, but how did you approach, I guess, yeah, creating a group of friends around you? Were you even really trying or thinking that much about it at the time? Um, I'm an only child. Um, so I've always been okay to be by myself. Initially, I didn't look much to um, get to know people. But eventually, um, you do want to have friends and you do want to mm. share how, how's your life going and you do want to hear from other people. So I started going to groups that were doing stuff that I liked. Um, beach volleyball or tennis or dancing. Um, and for those not aware or not seeing the video of this at the moment, Kathleen is a great spiker of the ball, just, you know, from the, the height that we've got going. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're starting to get in the beach volleyball. Do you say tennis as well? Was tennis, that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, initially it was tennis because um, when I moved in, so my partner back then, he, he was doing, he was driving trucks. When he moved here, he started to work for the sake same company okay so it's easy for him to make friends um and most of the people that were working at the company were brazilians so one of them was also um doing tennis lessons and coaching i found that interesting and then we start talking and he invited me to come with him come along and like try and um, yeah, that was my first friend. No, actually, not. I think my first friend I met at work was Erica. I think. Oh you, yeah. Yeah, you probably know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the girls that I was studying with, but none of them were Brazilian. So, do you find it difficult to make friends with non-Brazilians on the whole? Actually, not in Melbourne. Yes. But you're also, during, you're also in Melbourne during a time where you could barely go out and yeah, you true. were severely restricted, but I the, guess. The year that was all right with that, um, I, didn't, I still didn't feel welcomed much yeah, okay. by the Melbournians. I don't know if... They're too cool. <laughs> they're too... They're, they're just... Yeah, it's not my personal crowd on the whole. I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure that there's plenty of lovely people over there. But it just seems like it's a crowd of people that are very. I'm just going to say they're very cool. Yeah, they keep to I, themselves. Maybe that's not up to that. nothing wrong with that. It's just not most inviting environment to yeah. relationships. Yeah, I worry that that's just kind of Australians in general. I don't think so. No. Okay. All right. Sick. Sydney's always felt very open to me. Yeah. But but I figured it's because. There is such a large community of people from all over the world. Yeah, you know, yeah. I would have felt Melbourne would be similar just because you're getting so much influx of young people from across the country and different parts of the world all entering in. You would think that there's a lot of people all looking for a friend group, whilst Perth, Adelaide, Brisbane, again, maybe a little bit less of that traffic of new people coming through, which means that sort of, you know, uh, groups get set up and sort of stick around and maybe there's just not enough, again, yeah. like traffic of new people to create friendship groups. But, yeah, that's what I hear sometimes about Perth as well. It's, it can be sometimes a little bit closed off. You think so? I think so. At least that's what I've heard. Uh, again, particularly amongst people that have always lived here, it's yeah. you've created friendship groups, particularly through high school. Then th those, some of those friendship groups, like if you can maintain any of those friendships through sort of university and moving on to work life, you're pretty cemented. Yes. You know, so a lot of people, of course, will drop all their high school friends for new university and whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've definitely at least heard a few times of people being like, oh, it's a yeah. little bit, a little no. bit. Like it's I not easy in a bar in Perth necessarily to just strike up a conversation with random people yeah. as much as, for instance, Sydney is, which I, I would typically agree with. But mm. anyway, you can be the judge more than me. No, um, I do think people here are open to new friendships. Okay. Yeah. At we are nice. Perth people are very nice yeah, people. Yeah. Yes, very welcoming. But, yeah, I feel like genuine 
interest. I'm like my life or my culture or that's that's with me. Um, for my partner at the moment, he 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 does he does not think so. He I think he agrees with you. Okay. That you're more that you keep to them to yourselves as well. But um just depends, doesn't it, I guess. But yeah, I think if I had to say who is more open, I can't comment on Melbourne, but I would say like Sydney for me has always felt open. But also to me, Sydney is still kind of like a holiday destination. Yeah. And when you are on a holiday, you know, it yeah. is March, you, you're already relaxed. open, you're already, yeah, I don't give yeah. a shit. I'm not going to see these people again. Like, <laughs> I'm going to go say hello or not. You know, you, you, I'm sort of in that zone a little bit more as well. Yeah. Whilst, you know, again, I, I probably do find in Perth, you do just you hang around with your mates a little bit. It's not super like everyone that we don't know, like come join, like have a chat. You, you do sometimes, but uh, yeah, it's just certainly not as much as you travel. I just think you t- when you're traveling and you don't live in a certain place, you can just talk to anyone at any time. That's at least my feel with it. Yeah. Whilst once you're in your hometown, I think you do shut down or close down a little bit. General rule. <laughs> So you're over here in Perth now. Yeah. You, know, you guys are. You've decided to move here, and maybe even just before we. I feel like we've I've bagged Melbourne a fair bit. So maybe just before I move to the next part of the story, do you have some you know pros about Melbourne? You know, we've had maybe a little bit of the cons that maybe not as open, and certainly lockdowns were shit. Uh, weather because maybe questionable at times as well. But did you have some parts of Melbourne that you're like, all right, I see why you know, this side of it people would love or did you have any, yeah, what would be some of the, the things you loved about Melbourne? I have to think about that. <gasps> okay, Melbourne, maybe you are just shit. <laughs> no, it's just for me. Um, I'm sure there are like lots of... Uh, like, is their coffee <laughs> actually any better? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. It's... That's like they claim to fame to everyone else in Australia is, oh, the, mil- the, the coffee in Melbourne is always so much better. It's one of the old, ga- old jokes. I would, I would say restaurants there are better, better than here. Okay. Like the, the menus are a bit more diverse than here. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And, yeah, the service is typically a bit better as well over in Melbourne. Oh, they're not as nice. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's a little bit more efficient, I would say. Yeah, yeah, it's more efficient. But yeah, not necessarily nicer. No. <laughs> okay, so um, Melbourne, yeah, you're just not as good. S- it sounds like s- Kathleen's decided it here. Um, the public transport as well. It's easier to navigate with public transport in Melbourne than here. Fair. They do have the tram access everywhere. Yeah. Much more well set up trains. It's always felt like Melbourne was set up by the Germans, like very efficient tr- like public transport, yeah. train system, roads, everything makes sense as to how you would yes, get to a certain yes, place. Yes, yes. Sydney is an absolute mess to get around in, makes no sense. And Perth is sort of, like, they clearly started off with like one road and one rail and then yeah, they never figured, yeah. they were like, this, there'll never be that many people here. Yeah, yeah. You we always could. go back to the city to go somewhere else. Yeah, that's, you just have to go back to the city <laughs> to go somewhere else, yeah. Yeah, we never did a loop. We just, I think, whoever did it originally was like, nobody's going to want to go anywhere around here. Yeah. Little did they know. <laughs> Perth's killing it. Um, so you moved into Perth. You picked up a role. First friend, Erica through work i guess so this would be what year are we in now Twenty. sorry wait <laughs> what did you just say what year what year are you like you know this is all happening now in perth is this back in year 2022 that's 2022 that's 2022 yeah, two. yeah okay so you've come over to the the good side, uh, the light side, and we haven't had to deal with lockdowns at all, basically, throughout this whole period. Uh, so how did you, I guess, what was your first experience of coming to Perth? Sorry, I'll need a break. 
You need a break? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. This is the beautiful thing about editing. No one will ever know. Actually, though, like, for the most they part. They will, because, like, I was like this. Doesn't matter. No, honestly, if people notice, that's a great problem to have. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> most of most listens occur on Spotify itself. Yes. So it means that there's actually they no video yeah. involved. And for the video side as well, it's rare that someone's watching it on a TV that they're really paying close enough attention. And then if it is, it's like big whoop. I'll, I can put a sound effect in the middle to be like... Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> just a, a removal. Rainbow. Just a removal. Yeah. To I, can do a, I can do a cool edit. I'll do a good... Uh, transition screen but what we were uh talking about just beforehand was you were just i guess giving us a bit of a rundown of what it was like when you first arrived in perth Uh, and i was interested to know you know you'd obviously seen it heard about it talked to friends here but i guess what was your own personal impression when you arrived in perth the weather was amazing that was the first thing yeah (laughs) And beautiful beaches, and people were very welcoming. Take that, Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Melbournians. Yeah, they love it over there, so it's not going to phase them at all. So, it, did it live up to what you were sort of hoping it would be? Um, I didn't have much expectation. Okay. Yeah, it was a good surprise. Not that I was expecting it to be, like, not a good place to be. But um, I talked to people when I was living in Melbourne. Some loved Perth. Some other people just didn't like it much. And I well, well, I would just have to try it for myself and um, see how it goes. And, um, yeah, I was excited about, the like, going to the beach every day and doing four-wheel driving. Um and yeah, it lived for the expectation. There is um, a nice, not just Brazilian, but a four by four group that we got into on WhatsApp, and we were going for meetups and for drives as well. So that was very nice. Nice. How many four wheel drive experiences do you think you've had since being in Perth? Are we talking like single digits? Are we talking? 10, 20 yeah, plus? Yeah, that would probably would go to eight, like 8 to 10. Okay, cool. Whereabouts yeah. sort of, do you remember some of the places that you guys went to? Um, dwelling up, Lancelin. Okay, nice. Um, Lancelin up north, Jer- beautiful beach area, dwelling up a little bit more Is inland south. Jarves Bay? Jarves Bay, yeah, maybe. I'm also... Not the four-wheel drive expert, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Yeah. Did you have... Uh, um, well, Binga. Um, is the pl- chip. Is the plan, do you go out and do the tracks and then like, camp for a weekend? Or how is it, was we it just that. doing the tracks? We did that twice. Okay. But the um, other couple of times, we, we just went for the wheel, like, the day. Just for the Just fun driving, of yeah. Did uh, any did major catastrophes, any rollovers? Everyone always gets stuck occasionally. Yeah. So that probably, I assume you got bogged? No, went, well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was pretty easy when we were with the groups. When we were by yeah. ourselves. Nightmare. <laughs> yes. I got stuck once for four hours and 39 minutes. Who was counting, though? <laughs> Four hours and 39 minutes. Yeah, so it happened. that happened when we were getting to WA, actually. So what happens was uh, we drove from Melbourne to Perth. Nice. And then we thought, well, let's go to um, Esperance and go to the dunes and um, camp a little bit. And we were driving on along the beach. Uh, and the tide just got high, like pretty quick. Scary. <laughs> yeah. And then when we turn around to um, 
go back to the track, we got bogged on seaweed. Like gigantic seaweed. Yep. Piles of it. Yeah. So uh, the next four hours and 39, 39 minutes, minutes was spent, what, digging the seaweed out and... Yeah. We had a trailer as well. Oh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Attached to the car. What type of car was it? Uh, a Jeep Wrangler. Okay, all right. Should be able to handle some tough situations. Yeah. But the trailer was pretty heavy because we were carrying our stuff from Melbourne to here. Right. So we got like... Bold for you to take that down onto the beach. Yeah. Damn. Crazy people, hey? Yeah. Just... Very rare do you see four <laughs> driving with someone with a trailer on the back going along the beach. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if I've ever actually yeah, seen Yeah, we were that. so naive. <laughs> Never happen again. Well, you got to learn from your mistakes. Yeah. You're just fortunate the tide didn't then come in so much that your car got like swept out or... Was we were afraid of, but um, yeah, we could get it off. So the trailer was pretty like down the sand and the seaweed, and it was pretty heavy. So we couldn't get the car out because of it. Um. So we try we try to detach, and we like my partner was trying to do that, and I was um, panicking. <laughs> no, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> no, I'm trying to find the word for yeah. it. I was digging a hole, yep. like uh, about my size, like a meter and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say half a meter. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was digging a hole um, to what's the name? What did it put down there? Like a little rescue kit. Was there yeah. something to? Yeah, to put the rescue kit um, down the hole, uh, the sand back in. And then we could um, pull the car off. Okay, sure, sure, sure. So that worked, but I had to dig like two holes. So like it took the you some first time. one failed, and the second one was pretty good. So we got the car off, and then we rescued the trailer. Happy ending. Yeah, that's very fortunate because it could have easily not been so happy at all. <laughs> and Jeep Wranglers yeah, are we, not we cheap. Yeah, we could have lose the car. Yeah, that would have been yeah. very upsetting. Yeah. I don't know if you'd be covered by insurance nah. either nah. If, if you lost it to the beach. So you guys drove from Melbourne to Perth. You stopped through Esperance down south, do some tracks, get bogged. Okay, since then, never probably had quite as a bad experience as that with the bogging. Did some four-wheel drive tracks as well. Is that one of the... In terms of experiences around Perth or WA in general, is that one of your sort of top experiences to do? And do you have any others that you really loved or enjoy or continue to enjoy doing here? Yes, that and hiking. I love hiking. So WA got amazing places for that. The landscape's just beautiful. Um, got good hills to climb up. And um, it's a good activity and it's also very rewarding because, yeah, it's beautiful. Do you Are you in groups for the hiking? Like, do you find no, people, do you just do this yourself? I do that by myself or with, a f- like, one or two friends. Okay. On the whole, how have you gone, again, similar to Melbourne question, I guess, is how have you gone about, because uh, some of the people that we speak with, you know, again, finding a friend group wherever you go. If you're staying at a hostel, usually not such a problem. You can normally pick up a couple of friends or if you go to a big tour, again, normally you pick up like kind of a best friend after that and that's a way for solid people to meet up. Did you do any of those things or how did you start to accrue, um, you know, a group or a few, few friends? Yeah, I, I met people at work 
connect with them. And apart from that, um, I join clubs and meetups of people that were doing things that I enjoyed, like the dancing or um, hiking, just a walk or swimming, just anything. What kind of dancing group did you join? Um, Forró, which is a Brazilian dance. Forró? Forró. 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 Okay. I, I really sounded that's, like... That's a nice story because um, when there were a few, was it Dutch colonies yeah, in Brazil? I think so. Um, at that time, they would make a few... Um, country parties for their workers and they will say what's for all right yeah oh yeah okay so like forced parties for like a but party for, for, for all. all yeah for all yeah for, like all were welcomed yeah and then the like the dancing that they developed there that became the name for all which That's is like pretty cool yeah, yeah. For all, so everyone can join in. It's yeah, yeah very it's uh, pretty popular and yeah. What kind of dancing? How how would you describe, if you can, <laughs> the style of dancing that for all is? Um, you can compare that to salsa, I believe. Okay, all right. Yeah, I can see salsa in my not, head. Not so much not so many hip movements but it's partner more dancing it's more it's more footwork okay yeah more footwork more yeah. energy yeah is that again with a partner with or a partner. you can do solo okay. you can do solo as well but mostly with a partner okay for whole so all these groups that you find are they t- is it again just typically on facebook is there any other on facebook yeah um on meetup as well Oh, yeah, the actual yeah. Meetup website. So I found the, the uh, social tennis on Meetup. No, they were on Meetup. I actually had a friend. Friend, that sure. Was, yeah. Um, but they were on Meetup. Uh, the For Hot Dancing on Facebook. And other communities on Instagram. Yeah, okay. Do you find it's pretty... Once you go to these events, so I think it's a great way to do it is the things you're actually interested in find the groups of people that are engaging that activity, you've already got a shared interest. Uh, again, from those events, do you find it pretty easy to sort of, again, find people that you like? Is it more difficult? Like, I guess, yeah, how each time you've gone to an event, you've been like, oh, I like this person, or has it sort of been pretty uh, pretty open and welcoming? Yeah, yeah, because everybody that, like, started some way, so they're pretty welcoming, um, they are very easy to like have a conversation with they are open and then like they understand that you you might not have as many friends so they they always invite to like do stuff together as well like to go for a coffee or um yeah or just keep going along on the the group the activity group and so during this time as well, you're in Perth now and maybe for other people that are looking to come here and try and figure out like how do I create, I guess, like a sustainable lifestyle? How do I, what should of work should I, should I pick up? Um, what role did you get into? And I guess, do you have any recommendations that people might want to look at uh, in order for jobs here or just uh, general advice that you might have um, for job searching as a whole? Um, for job searching, there are a couple of um, face group, Facebook groups. There are a couple of Facebook groups that you, that you can search and um, find a couple of um, jobs there. I also recommend... Like if you have someone that you know that is into the industry mm. you want to get in, just um, to go out with that person, have a conversation and like get a few tips on how to get a job. Or 
just go to the workplace itself and see what the opportunities they have there. And um, yeah, always have your resume with you and then just ready to hand them. I guess that's the other benefit of just networking in general at some of those shared, those clubs and activities is, you know, naturally you find out, oh, what do you do? And that person goes, oh, I do this. Yeah. And if it's something yeah, that you're absolutely. like, oh, I'd love to do that as well, you know, then you've got that person yeah. with that in. So certainly the networking helps a, a lot. lot for jobs of any kind, whether you're wanting to do FIFO or whether you're wanting to do something yeah. just around in Perth. And what, what did you end up sort of, what did you end up doing um, and don't have to share, but how much do you actually get paid for that if someone was going to consider to do it as well? Yeah, so um, here in WA, I got into um, social work. Sorry. Here in WA, I got into support work. Mm-hmm. And um, first, I started doing a course on community service. And my... Um, my trainer at the time, she helped us, us doing our resumes, connecting with people. Uh, I got to the Brazilian group and asked if someone knew um, any words. Does anyone? I I asked if I asked if anyone knew a place that was hiring. And um, yep. yeah, so one of the girls in the group connected me with her manager. Uh, we talked and I got my first opportunity at a residential um, care home. Um, I developed few skills there and then I find the confident. And then I found the confidence to do the job independently. So and make more money. And make more money. <laughs> so at the time, I would get 26 hourly. Yep. Yeah. Before taxes. Um, and then now, I get almost double. I get 50. But it's on ABN. So, yeah. Before taxes. Hell yeah. Yeah. Much better. Yeah, so uh, that's one of the aged care disability as well. Those two areas, constant demand and need for workers in the space. And uh, the route that you've gone down is, I would say, typical, but maybe not well understood that that's what you can do, mm. uh, is develop some basic skills under a business or at a chain you know, whether it be aged care or NDIS, which is the disability scheme here in Australia. Uh, and then there are so many opportunities for privates where you can, you know, particularly easy if you've got your own car at this point as well, to go between a few different people that you can see pretty consistently throughout the week. That's right, yeah. And because of all the support from government, it means, well, you can basically charge quite a bit yeah. and it doesn't really take too much money out of the pocket of the person that you're helping so exactly yeah it's a it's definitely a place that you can do very well in and earn a good good amount of money ndis <laughs> aged care they're big ones they are uh, they're not maybe as famous or well known as the fifo yeah. jobs that are around yeah. but uh i think they're, they're certainly underrated and are only going to be in yeah. more demand with every year coming forward they also well. got like small courses that you can do online as well to build up skills so yeah and probably free courses free, yes free courses yeah so that kind of makes did you have to do that community service degree or the online course in order to get your first job or do you think it was really just the network the first job yes because job, okay. yeah to get it you know residential uh care you do um, but for support work, you don't. But it's, yeah, it's better to have because then, like, you already know a few things. Some, y yeah. yeah. Again, for that confidence. Same with, I believe you can do fairly cheap, if not free courses 
to get into childcare assistance, which again, maybe not the most lucrative thing when you're working under a business. Yeah. But then if you can private go private to look after kids, same thing. It's that's it's quite lucrative for someone that goes into that. So you've sort of found a few activities that you like to do. You've now picked up a few friends as a result as well. Found some work, you know, working pretty long hours still at the moment, but earning, again, um, good money. What are some of the things that you like to do now with your off time? Do you have a bit of a routine? I know you mentioned, uh, and I've even seen you, of course, (laughs) down beach volleyball, but what else do you sort of like to do in your spare time at the moment? I do like to go for hikes. Um, day trips as well. I like. Just when was the last? When what was? Where was the last day trip that you took? Oh, it was a, not a day trip. It was a road. So the day trip. You was to. Was it a place down south, up north? Was it just a general, were you going around to do something in particular or it was just a get out, see the countryside, drink some wine? Probably wouldn't have been rottenness otherwise. Yeah, so, yeah, no. So, so the last one I went to... Um, or maybe not even the last one, but... What was one of the a road trip, I guess, or something that you feel was yeah. uh, one? So the like, last yeah. one was to Basotan. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, which is about two hours ish yeah, south of hours, Perth. Yeah, about that. South of Perth. Uh, went to Rottnest as well. Yeah. yeah. Did you get the quokka selfie? Yeah. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> Everyone has to get that one. <laughs> um. What else? Dwelling up, which is pretty close. And at each of these places, you know, are you, when we say day trip, is it really going over the day? Or for some of these places, do you stay a, a night or two? Would you recommend, uh, yeah, would you recommend someone stay a night at Rottnest? Or you felt like you can pretty much get no, it done in a day? pretty much done in a day, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a Bursal little bit expensive well. to stay on Rottnest as well. It is. <laughs> town as well. I wouldn't recommend to stay about. Two to three days in Albany, if you like hiking. And generally, the further north and towns you go, once you're driving past four hours or something, you probably want to stay a night yeah, so that you're yeah, not yeah. just using all of your time in transit, I guess. Um, for, I guess, so since you've been here as well in Perth, you know, uh, we sort of spoke outside the show that you were, you know, really keen to get back into your studies as well. Do you have a little bit of a you know, uh, plan of where you want to be in five years' time? Are you sort of you just sort of take each day as it comes? Do you have a six-month plan, I guess? What do you feel is on the horizon for yourself now? So I do not want to go back to study. Um, getting to uni uh, will take about three years. Yeah. And then um uh, traveling more and like bringing my family here yeah yeah so going to europe a trip around australia as well get the caravan style or van or just a four-wheel drive and nah, just i need to do that so yeah yeah, need, yeah. Need to do it at some point yeah yeah okay and then with the i guess Looking back now, so, you know, you first really arrived here when you were 19-ish. Yeah. So this is, what, total four years ago now, four or five, something like that? Almost five, yeah. Almost five years ago. So looking back to Keth back then and Keth now, what uh, is there any advice that you would have given yourself, you know, back then uh, or I guess uh, some advice just, yeah, to your younger self about your trip and what to expect or anything that you would sort of think – might be helpful to have known back then. Yeah. So not to be afraid to re- reaching out to people and starting conversations, especially to improve um, your English and to um, 
build friendships. Um, not to stress so much over work or where your life is going because you, you're going to figure out along the way. And well, we're going to miss your family a lot. At least I do. And um, yeah, just to keep in contact with them as much as you can and not to feel guilty uh, about losing um, the birthdays or yeah, big events in your family because eventually like you you you're gonna stay you're gonna visit them and um make good memories with them like you're not losing them forever or they're still proud of you even though you're not there a hundred percent of the time or you're not helping or yeah, yeah it would be hard uh well i can imagine it would be hard to have family so far away and again you, you can only see them so often i guess so shout out to families everywhere from across the world that you may currently not be able to just drive down the road to go say hello to um my brother has been away for about three or four years now and i'm genuinely impressed and i can tell that every time he does see mum and dad it does mean so much yeah you know i see mum and dad very often so they're probably sick of me more than anything else. But, uh, you know, it's really nice. But I think as a result of the less interactions, every interaction is like a, a genuine Info, memory that yeah. gets created. It's, it's a jam, yeah. Um, and maybe just to finish off, I guess, is uh, a lot of this, a lot of sort of what we're talking about now with um, people travelling around Australia and, and solo travellers in general is, um, I guess, like what makes travel... Why is it important to to people? Why is it something that we seem to be so keen to do and to achieve? And um, we each maybe have different goals with with what travel is. So um, I think I'd like to finish off with the question of like to you, what does sort of travel mean for you, Kath? Um, experiences, connecting with people, getting to know them and their habits. And getting to know yourself. Because every person you talk to, um, and ev- like just a conversation you have with them, is just it's kind of a part of you, like a part of your personality that um, comes and like what I'm trying to get to say here. I'll probably start again. You can always just say it in Portuguese as well if you like. <laughs> I'll translate. <laughs> I'll translate over the top. Yeah. I think what she's saying <laughs> is... <laughs> I'll get Google Translate and then I'll read out the subtitles. Oh, okay. So... So the experiences, um, connecting with people and getting to know yourself because every new person you talk to is just an opportunity to tap into a new version of yourself Mm -hmm. and um, to feel, oh, I never thought about that. How do I feel about it? And that... Yeah, it's very interesting to see how it goes on and what it where it takes you to. Kind of forces you to contend with yeah new versions of yourself, new ideas. So you know you really have to discover yeah a little bit about yourself. I totally agree. So look, I really appreciate um, you sharing us a little bit about your journey and your life thus far. Uh, very happy to have uh, met you as well, albeit in a place that was eventually a bit of a walking zombie land during COVID of everyone just sort of looking like, I don't know, out of an yeah. alien movie or something. Um, but uh, looking forward to a new neuro, emerging neuroscientist yeah. coming out. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we'll do another one of these in the future as well. You can give us a little bit more of a, an update as to where you're at. Sure. 
Yeah, cool. yeah, right. that would be nice. Thanks, Kath. Oh, my pleasure. Cheers, guys. <laughs>